going on guys? Um, this is week four of some interesting stuff. We just had Christmas, um, so obviously it's been slow news. I've had my friend helping me, I'll get him to say hello at the end of the video. And yeah, so mainly this week just got one good article uh, and a few films to talk about and I'll recap what I did on Christmas Day. So yeah, let's get to it. The first thing I want to talk about is a little article that I got linked to today. The article is about... The article is about... <laughs> The is my hair all right? Yeah, bro. The article is actually about how the FBI and the Homeland Security and the police in America working in collusion with uh, some private companies. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. Oh, bro, you got it, bro. You got it. So the article is about how the FBI, Homeland Security, the police, and a number of other private sector entities were working um, to halt the. Occupy Wall Street movement. The article kind of touches on the surface of a number of things. I'll try and cover them briefly. If you want to read it in detail and make your own kind of like um, ideas about it, then the article is linked at the bottom down there. So this article was sparked by a document which has now um, just been released. The article actually demonstrates and outlines how a number of entities, like I mentioned, which was the FBI, the police, Homeland Security, and private entities such as banks, these entities were actually in coordination with each other um, for their own interest to try and stop the Occupy Wall Street movement. So, the document actually alludes to the fact that this, um, there was a group, probably consisting of the entities that I mentioned, uh, went under the collective name of the Domestic Security Alliance Council. They concerned themselves with stopping the Occupy Wall Street movement. So, um, this group would carry out data sharing and other activities to kind of cripple um, the Occupy Wall Street movement. and. There's one point in the article which actually alludes to the fact um, that the FBI would not tell people in the movement if they were under threat of, um, say, assassination. Which you can make your own assumptions about, but it's, it's obviously quite heavy stuff. So this obviously um, proposes the question about uh, private entities and, and how much influence they have in the state and how much collusion there is going on between these kind of two sectors. And it's quite interesting to see that, yeah, the FBI would withhold information that was um, from people that were being threatened. And so, yeah, if you've got any interesting comments, please post them below. Okay. Anyway, the next thing I want to talk about, I've basically got like three movie trailers which I, which I came across this week, which just look amazing, and I have to talk about them. The first is The Place Beyond the Pines. This is a new Ryan Gosling film. This film is basically about Ryan Gosling, who is kind of like a stunt, a bike stuntman and he finds out he's had a child with Eva Mendes and then to pay like support for the child he starts getting into crime. I don't want to spoil too much so watch the trailer and then it's also kind of like that alongside the story of Bradley Cooper who's a cop and then it's going to be obviously like crossovers and they're going to cross paths. It's actually, um, yeah, it looks really exciting. As I said, it stars Ryan Gosling, it's got Eva Mendes, Bradley Cooper, and there's also another lead lady in it whose name is Rose Bine. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but yeah, it looks like a brilliant film, very dramatic, and I suggest you keep an eye on it. The next film is This Is The End. It's basically a film about the world ending and kind of like cataclys cataclysmic events. And, and these events ravage Los Angeles, and it's about like a group of people is like a big ensemble cast getting together and kind of fighting through this. It has uh, James Franco, who's um, obviously from the Spider-Man series and many other films, uh, Jonah Hill from Superbad and um, all these other comedy films which we all know and love, uh, Seth Rogen, again he's a um, comedy guy, we all like knocked up, uh, what other films is he in? What films is Seth Rogen in? Sure. Watch the trailer below, check it out. I think it looks hilarious. Uh, is he? Is he in? For yeah, Seth Rogen's in Four Year Old Virg Virgin as well, and yeah, he's in loads of films. You all know him. The Zach and Miri make a porno. That one, yeah. Final uh, trailer that I want to talk about is something that was actually released a few weeks, two weeks ago, but I only came across it now, and it's I'm ashamed. I missed it because I've been so excited about it for a long time. Which is the trailer for Pacific Rim. This is basically Guillermo del Toro. If you don't know him, he's done Pan's Labyrinth. He did the Hellboy series. And he has like a fascination with Japanese monster movies like Godzilla, etc. And he's kind of doing like a westernized version of that. The story is uh, portals open up in the Pacific Ocean, big monsters have come through, human races kind of like to, to, to defeat them has made these big monsters ourselves, like these big robots. 
and it's about the battle between us and them. The way it all interacts, it looks really good. So yeah, again, check out the trailer. The cast is actually quite interesting because there's no huge names other than Idris Elba and Ron Perlman. Uh, Idris Elba is actually kind of one of the main characters. Ron Perlman, I'm not sure, he's not even in the trailer. I just saw him on the wiki page. The two main characters who are actually going to be two of the pilots of the big robots, which are known as Jaegers. Uh, and they, I've never even heard of them before. I know which films they've been in, but I don't think I've watched either of their performances. They are uh, Charlie Hunnam and an actress called Rinko Kikuchi. And an actress called Rinko Kikuchi. But yeah, it looks brilliant. Very exciting trailer. And yeah. I can't wait to see it next year. That's about it. Again, slow news this week, so I just thought I'd throw a few things together I thought were really interesting. I thought I'd finish just wrapping up what happened on Christmas. Like I said, I wanted to record um, the Monopoly game that I had with all my friends and my family, but some people didn't want to be recorded, which was a shame. But yeah, we had a brilliant Christmas dinner. We did a Secret Santa. Actually, talking about the Secret Santa, let me just, yeah. I bought a remote control car for my friends, which he loved. Uh, someone else got a remote control car, which didn't work. Uh, then there was like a paper watch which someone got which was pretty trendy and then there were some Nerf guns and I got a money jar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's a money jar that counts your money when you put money inside it. But still, anyway, ran out of film just now, lost my trailer thought, I was saying something about Christmas dinner or presents, that's about it. And um, just wanted to say thanks for the views. Comment, like, and subscribe, please helps out a lot. It makes me feel good about my life. And yeah, shout out to Josh, my friend, for helping me kind of collate the information on the Please. first article. Please. Josh, say hello. Bring my bottle. Oh, I bring his bottle. So yeah, um, yeah, help me out on the first article, and yeah, I imagine he's gonna be in later videos when we start doing skits and stuff. Possibly. That <laughs> okay, that's a yes, okay, for sure. Thanks to everyone for yeah, watching and all that. And yeah, I think it's time to go to Tesco and buy some ice cream and chill out and watch a film or something. Be on later tonight, which obviously when you're watching this, it's already up, so yeah. It's a parallel universe, it's a loop. Anyway, peace!